across Europe, businesses are reopening, travel restrictions are easing and hope is returning that life will return to normal. But as Evelyn Laverick reports, while the numbers are moving in the right direction, authorities are warning that the danger is not yet over. Italy's president, Mattarella, visits Codogno on Republic Day. It's the city that was once the epicentre of the country's COVID-19 outbreak. Italy is now rolling out the red carpet for foreign visitors. Today, a rule requiring new arrivals from Europe to self-isolate for two weeks is being scrapped as it eases restrictions on tourism to help build its decimated economy. Italy's emergence from its coronavirus nightmare is being echoed by its neighbours. In Western Europe, we are seeing a steady decline. It's not speedy, but there's a steady decline in new cases being reported daily. So that means the numbers of new cases are still significant, but the numbers each day reported are coming down. But there are many voices warning against easing restrictions too fast. Germany has been applauded for its handling of the pandemic and is opening bars and soon its borders. But there's been a setback. City officials in the town of Gottingen are having to close schools once more following last week's discovery of a cluster of around 35 infections in flats housing several extended families. In the UK, the number of people dying each week linked to coronavirus has dropped to its lowest level since March, but it remains one of Europe's worst hit countries. The government is likewise easing lockdown restrictions while trying to understand who is at risk. Age is the biggest risk factor for coronavirus. Next, gender. Living in a city is a risk. And being black or from a minority ethnic background is also a significant risk factor. There is much more work to do to understand what's driving these disparities and how the different risk factors interact. In the meantime, everyone is being urged to follow safety guidelines and wash hands. MPs in London were seen setting a good example, maintaining social distancing while queuing to vote. Evelyn Loverick.